if you guys haven't been following along, we bought this trawler about eight months ago. It was in terrible shape. We've been putting an insane amount of work into it. We were in the boatyard for a solid six months. We just launched and now we're finishing up the interior and adding some of the accessories to make this boat a super pleasant place to live and cruise on. We hope you enjoy this video. Real quick, we still have some of our limited edition I Love Boat Work t-shirts available uh, they're limited edition so once they're sold out they're done forever and we have a few left check them out they're in the link in the description below and we hope you guys enjoy this video what you doing over there demolition i get such joy out of this so this is all water damaged as you can see um and it was just peeling off so we are going to just peel everything off and then we have like a flat surface but it's not water damage all the way through. It's just the the outer layer that. Yeah, but it's so soft that you could just go like. I, yeah. Like I'm literally like peeling off my hands. But what I'm saying is, what's left isn't water damage. No. Yeah. So now that the veneer's off, we have this like flat, solid surface. So we're just gonna put like a piece of paneling right here. So, this is something where, it's been a big like. Ugly peeling, water damage looking thing for so long, and when we finally get it off it's gonna make this face look so nice <laughs> okay so yesterday we weren't filming because it was a very stressful situation and we were just had our hands full and we didn't have a camera but we attempted to install our first sheet of formica behind this like bar area and i had the glue on both sides and billy and i were putting it on together and the center got stuck and then the rest of it got stuck and it wasn't in place so we ended up ripping it off and when we ripped it off it broke into about a million pieces so we're starting over today we're making a template so it is perfect this time i have my popsicle sticks lined out on my formica and i got this fancy tool the other day on amazon and it's laminate cutting shears which is a lot easier than using the router especially since all of the lines are super straight so that's what we're doing now It's not what I wanted to happen. Attempt number two, this time we're using paper to block the glue from touching each other and then we'll pull back the paper once we have it in perfect position and we've moved the table back more so we have more room. Paper idea was our friend Joe's idea. Shout out Joe. Our neighbors, they gave us a bunch of ideas too. Dawn and Carrie and Pascal and John. So we've had a whole teamwork of trying to help us with this formica and I hope that this is the time. And when I was pulling the formica in after cutting it, the wind caught it and I already ripped off but at least it was a small piece in an area that you'll never see because it's covered by a bench and we'll just glue it back on. This formica will be the end of me. <laughs> Okay, now that the galley is done, we are moving into this area, the main, the main salon or saloon, whatever the heck the right term is. If you guys missed a video, we resealed these windows from the outside. Obviously that's not the permanent fix. The permanent fix would be to take the windows out and recock them entirely. But we took out all of the old sealant. We resealed them. It has rained multiple times since then and we currently have no leaks. On the interior, we're gonna take this piece that's covering up rotted veneer right now, take it off, clean up whatever the heck is under here 
probably ferret smooth and then we're gonna cover it with formica like we just did to this wall so it might seem like we're kind of just covering up the problem but the real problem was the fact that the window was leaking and ruining everything so we fixed that problem now we're covering it with something that will not rot if it ever leaks again we don't know what's under here i took the other side off already and it was pretty nasty under here but i for some reason i don't think this side is as bad I feel like a top layer of veneer is coming off, but it's not like I can't push my finger in like I can on the other side. So this side, we should probably start with the hard side first, but we'll start with this side first just because <laughs> we're here already. This is the first time we're getting like back here under this window because there's like the bench and I just pulled it away and there's another like cabinet door and we showed you on the other side what we found and this side has the same thing. An extra giant prop down there. <laughs> Interesting place to store it. Okay, I have it sanded. I have all the loose stuff taken off. I have it sanded. I am gonna fare right here and in this corner over here. But the other side is definitely going to have to be fair too, so I'm going to move to the other side, get all that loose stuff off, sand that, and then both sides can be sanded. And this is what we're working with on this side. I know when we first did this, the walkthrough of this boat, this was all covered by like a thick, like that wood paneling just like what we took off on the other side um, but a couple days into it i like started pulling stuff and obviously it's really bad under here so we're gonna peel back what we can see what we're working with okay i have chipped away any loose stuff I have tried to get it as even as I can. I have made templates because we're gonna fill this area with some wood to get it closer to the level. And then once we have the wood in there, then we will fare it smooth. And we're going to use the old piece that was covering up the ruined veneer. So that will fit in nice and perfect there. Billy's gonna cut it out with the saw for me. And then we'll move on to the next step. have the pieces they're pretty flat and then where it's raised a little I can go in and sand and then we'll fair this but we're gonna stick it on with thick so where the thick people go this is a total boats like you just put a mixing tip on it and it's just thick and epoxy adhesive so super easy it's been super handy just to like wherever you need epoxy just you don't want to mix up a whole batch just throw you know pop this on Sometimes if you've already used it, I just replace the tip. I put a new tip on it and it works great. It makes it so easy. So this would be a great strong glue for that backing. Probably super overkill, but whatever. It's really easy. What does that tip do? It's a mixing tip. So there's two parts in here. So you just squeeze the trigger. It pushes the two parts out through the tube. And then the tip just mixes those two parts that come out separately and then mixes them as it gets expelled through the tip. Fancy. I don't know, just don't get it anywhere you don't want to get it on because it's harder to sand, much harder to sand than bearing compound. stuff out of the way just so when we do I do sand and like lay out all of the formica nothing's blocking our way and I just found another secret compartment right next to the other secret compartment <laughs> a few weeks ago we found a new air conditioning condenser it was in a compartment inside our closet and now Sierra found another secret compartment the behind these stairs bunch of, like engine parts so I think it's a it might be the old like electric pump for the old autopilot. But look at all the stuff next to it. Yeah, and then some like old electronics and stuff. Look how rusty that thing is. That's probably an old, the old oil change pump. 
It looks old school. Is that like a diaper pad? Ew, that's like a period pad. Ew. I've seen them under the engines too. Like I think they just used them as oil absorbent. Interesting. Is going on our wall, and whatever is not smooth after today, it's just not going to be perfect. But we're going to get it pretty dang close. There's just like three spots that needed a little bit more, but they're all in very hard to reach places. Yesterday, when it was cured but not cured enough to sand, I took that time and I made my other template so when we finally do get the formica in stock the, the template for the starboard and the port side are ready it's just over here right now because i'm about to fare again so the goal is to have it look like this that is this bottom piece is formica as well we're going to use the same formica bright white matte eight by four sheet for there and here okay our next project we have never ever had all new matching fenders but we just got a bunch of fenders in from Taylor made and i'm going to be cutting line so we have cut one two size tested it and it fits we're going to put a double stopper knot on one end and then melt the other end and then put some what are we putting on the end shrink shrink wrap too. shrink wrap so it doesn't unravel and then we will have six all brand new fenders ready to go. So I am just matching them all to size of that first one, taping it up so we can cut it without it unraveling. And I'll do this for all six of them and then we'll go on to the next. Okay, we have all six cut to size. Now we're doing stopper knots. Five more to go. Last step is to heat shrink the end of the line and then we'll switch out all of the old ones with the new ones. How do my fenders look? They look amazing. There's multiple ways you do this. You don't even necessarily need heat shrink tubing. Like some people, I, we already melted the ends, but you could just melt them a little bit more and they should stay. But I've had come apart still, even if you like really melt them. So we'll try this out with, I think I've used this technique before, but just heat shrink tubing on the very end. Probably have the line stick out just a tiny bit like that. Full blast. And then it'll just shrink and hold the three strands together really nice and tight. So it shrunk in this direction as well. So I probably, sh probably for you when you do all the rest of them, Leave here. just barely any sticking out. Yeah, just do it flush with the end and that should be good. There you go. You can see like the glue coming out of the shrink wrap tubing. And you don't need anything, uh, the stuff can be kind of expensive. Um, so you don't need anything longer than this, if anything, go a little bit shorter. <laughs> what do you think? 
back to paneling. I know I should not be cutting this on the bed, but I'm just going to do a very rough trim so it's short enough where I can lay it out on the floor up there and get the exact draw out of the template. Okay, I have my template laying on my sheet. I have drawn it out. Now it is time to cut. Okay, this has been a long process, but I'm almost ready to spray. Okay, one panel's up, the second panel just got put up. Billy's gonna route it for me real quick and then we can put the stairs back on. Okay, here we go. Panels on, chairs up. We just need to do the trim, make the new curtains, caulk around the window seal, and caulk the seam that the two panels connected, put a piece of trim underground, <laughs> and then we'll be good. So far, it looks so much better than the rotted veneer. So now we're gonna move all of this side to the clean side so we can do that all. Someone's not gonna be happy. Four, where the Formica meets the veneer. I was gonna do trim, but I've been having a lot of trouble finding a teak or mahogany or some sort of hardwood trim that would go here and not be, like white oak would just be too light for this area and it just would look a little funny. So I've been having some issues. However, after I did all the fenders the other day and all the dock lines, I would have this one string left and I was it was just sitting here when I was wondering about my trim. I was like, wait a minute. What if I turn this into my trim? Something like that. Hello, it is a brand new day here aboard Mountain Mist. And guess what? We have the other panel up and glued. Sorry I didn't film it yesterday. It was a bit of a process. Took me literally all day to cut out the curves. And then we ran out of paper that we were using to like back it with and not let it stick. So I was like, hmm, will plastic work? Billy thought it would work. I tested it a little bit and we were ready to put it up only to have the plastic stick really bad and we were almost not able to get it off ripped it off without ripping the board this time only to have all the plastic stick and we had to peel all the plastic off from the actual formica sheet and then i went to home depot and got a whole new giant roll of paper only to use need to use a tiny tiny bit of it so it was a process but it's up and we finally have this space like cleared where we can walk how does it feel to be able to sit at the table? It's so good, like, 
every time we come in here and to relax and we're all tired and you have to move something you move something to sit in the dang seat that then you can't put your feet anywhere <laughs> now we actually have our whole seating area back and it's so comfortable and we have a table to work on instead of like crap all over it it'll last like this for about a day and then we have to move everything from the view berth in here but that day we will enjoy it It is so time to replace this thing. Look at this. So I didn't realize how bad it truly is until I looked at it closely. It is so UV damaged. It's just dry and the wires are exposed in here. I don't know if you guys can see that. Let's shut the power off. We'll take this one off and we'll put our new cord on so we don't get electrocuted. Yeah, slowly, slowly but surely. But I don't know if you guys can see that, but it looks like it was a little melted at one point. That's sketchy, so we're gonna. the two 30 amp female ends split into a 50 amp male. So again, if you only had 50 amps at the dock, a 50 amp receptacle at the dock, you plug this 50 amp in, and then we use the two 30 amp pigtails to use our two shore power cords to go right into the boat. Okay, friends, our time at the dock is getting very limited. So we're getting all like the last minute things we need before we're gonna like lose our mailbox and lose the ability to have stuff shipped. And there's one thing we don't have on this boat. You don't have a grill on your boat. You ain't boating. We, I think, just got the coolest grill you could ever possibly get because it's not just a grill. Super it's cool. a pizza oven. <laughs> you don't believe me, really do you? Really annoying. <laughs> <laughs> and a skillet. And. Bug in your hair. So yeah, I want to see our grill. I'm gonna set it up because I need that back deck to finish a project. Oh, we get to set it up now? Yeah. Yes! <laughs> we are not limited on space on a trawler, so we figured we might as well go all out. We would much rather be hanging out outside anyways, enjoying the scenery. Hopefully orcas will be like coming up to hang out with us, maybe ask for a burger. So not only can we grill, it's got like its own like stove so we could like boil our crab water. We have a griddle so we could do like bacon, eggs, pancakes. And we have a pizza oven where we can make our own homemade pizza. Okay, so this is what I was talking about. This is like the stove portion. You could use a skillet or a pot of water or whatever, just like a normal single burner stove. Then we have our griddle. Then we have our grill. And then we have our pizza oven. So everything stacks on this one. This is like the base and that always stays on so that's going to always stay on the back deck and then these kind of change in and out we'll probably have that one on primarily like mounted and then we'll switch the, out these two i wanted to mount it like right where all those boxes are basically because it's like right behind the galley and it'd be sheltered by like any wind that's like a big yeah it'd be sheltered by any wind it just seems like a nice grilling spot over there but sierra didn't want it over there so we're mounting it over here. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm just worried about like grease dripping down the deck. I think there are ways to like catch the grease, but you know, worried about it over there. And like, if it's back there, then you have like this big old mount that we have to do and it'll block the window and we want to be able to see out the window. That was my main thing. We want to be able to see out that window out the back deck. He does have a great point about it blocking the wind, but I think it's worth having the view of outside over the wind blockage. And right now, that's our storage space. <laughs> okay, there she is. That's cool, so that's a nice little cutting, cutting board. Oh man, what are we gonna make first? Hot dogs and hamburgers? <laughs> Okay, we 
officially have our new grill. But why would you have just a grill when you could have a griddle? And that's not all. A pizza oven, because who doesn't love fresh pizza? Okay guys, in all seriousness, we're really excited for this and we can't wait to make our first pizza. It's just about to put the dogs on the grill and I remembered we don't really have any grill utensils here, but we got this package like what, two months ago? And we haven't opened it yet because we're waiting <laughs> until we got a grill. And I think I know what's in it. What is that, Jitty girl? It's a grill brush, careful, it's sharp. Another grill brush. This one's got a scraper on it and Brussel free grill brush. So it's just like a spiral in now. Brussel free grill brush. Jetty definitely smells food in here. SPG and butter. Barbecue rub. That's what you smell, huh, Jay? Gloves? Ooh, a smoker box. There we go. So that when we catch some cod, we can smoke it on the grill. Thermometer? Stainless steel grill, grill basket for like veggies and stuff. Stuffed burger press, meat claws, so we can do pulled pulled pork and pulled chicken from the grill. And grill tools. Heck yeah. And grill mats. So if we not the griddle, if we just had a grill or if we didn't want to change the attachment and we just wanted to put grill mats on the grill, here we go. All right, so you guys will be seeing this in the next few months as we cook up some masterpieces out in the back deck. Thanks for going to the food store and getting all this amazing looking food. First night on the grill, baby. All right, long day of work deserves some dogs. It's like, that's the Check this out. Organic, pasture raised, grass fed, beef, hot dogs. <laughs> like an oxymoron. <sighs> Take a picture, the last time it's gonna be that shiny. Those dogs. Probably a year. Probably more. 